Hey guys, welcome to the HVAC Diaries. Today is Friday, April 28th, and you know what time it is. It's time for an HVAC vlog. Oh boy, it has been a day. Happy Friday, by the way, but it has been a day. I was kind of looking forward to today's job all week. We replaced another one of those um, ceiling mounted water source heat pump units. And we've done so many of these. If you've been watching my vlogs for a while, you've seen a number of these happen. So I enjoy these jobs because now, like I know enough on these jobs where I can just be kind of left alone and I can do the next thing and then I can do the next thing because I just know. And today actually I had a, a cool opportunity to do something different. Usually like there's always my dad, myself and my brother on these jobs and each of us sort of has our little task that we do. I usually do the control cable and the duct, I remove the duct. My brother does the water lines and my dad usually does the blower. So today when we got there, everyone just kind of started doing stuff and I'm like, you guys are doing my things. So I got to do the blower for the first time, myself this time. And what that really means is when we, when the unit comes, the blower is facing on, um, facing one of the sides. It's like a sideway orientation. And so what I need to do is just reconfigure the blower's um, configuration, I guess. So it's blowing out the back and not the side. So that was kind of cool. I, I would try to figure it out myself for a little bit and then I had to get my dad's help. And basically what happens is you, you just like undo it on the one side, but then the trick is you got to turn it upside down and turn it around. I just turned it around and then I was like, how is this frame going to fit in there? And anyway, my dad came along and he was like, oh no, you just have to turn it upside down. Then the frame fits around the unit properly. So that was cool. Now I know how to do that for next time. But the difficulty for this job was just the the unit's location. It's located just above like a, dis a divider wall um, with a door. So we were just very limited on where we could put our ladders. Um, so unfortunately we had to like scrunch up really close to the wall and then we're leaning like as far as we could over to the side. Um, as well as leaning as far as we can in front of us trying to work and then just like you just make contact with like the board and whatever you need to work on there there's no place for any leverage um, there's always there's, there's a threaded rod here there's pipes everywhere I know I've, I've told this story before <laughs> it's not an unusual thing that we get to contend with all of those mechanical things while we're trying to replace a unit And then I had just had to laugh at myself at the end when I was putting on the final panel, the like the electrical panel back. <sighs> Man, it, you know, sometimes we work on these units and we're like, these installers, why would they do this? And then as I'm putting the panel back, there's no space. Like I'm, I've literally got to like snake it through these wires and around these things. Like the roof is right there. I'm just trying to like put it in there. And <laughs> so I left it there. Cause I gotta get through everything here. <laughs> I would take them off. 
had a good laugh and I'm like, the poor souls who have to work on this unit next time. That's me and my brother. <laughs> We've done this to ourselves. We had no choice. That's where the unit goes. And once again, the genie lift was the star of the show. We were a little bit concerned that the, the legs, the like it's got a very large base, like footprint. And we were concerned that the legs were not going to fit in the little hallway that we had to work in. But it was all good. All right, let's take it back a little bit to the beginning of the week where we did an oil change on the compressor that we replaced a few weeks ago. My dad wanted it to run a little while. And surprisingly, the old oil wasn't in terrible condition. I mean, it was definitely discolored, um, used oil, but it wasn't terrible. And we also replaced the filter dryer cores. Um, and if you remember from the previous ones that we replaced a few weeks ago, they were really foamy and like gross and nasty. The new ones, the new ones that we replaced were not as foamy and gross like that at all. So we're pretty pleased with the condition of that system. Looks good. Once we put everything back together, we did a quick leak test to make sure that there was nothing um, leaking out. And yeah, then we were back in business. And for a place that I complain about quite a lot, I complain all the time that they don't do their maintenance and they don't do this and that. But I have to say that this location, this meat supplier, has been the gift that keeps on giving in my apprenticeship. I have learned so much from that system. It's, it's a complicated system. It's the most complicated system that we work on. It's semi-hermetic compressor. Um, and it's just been such a great learning place for me.
We also took a look at a catering truck at a movie set. And I used to get so excited when we were going on a movie set. Whoa, so exciting, but they're really boring. Now I get excited about the washroom situations that they might have on set, because they have the most luxurious porta potties. Here, check it out. So we're at this film studio. I get to use the fancy, fancy porta potty. Look, it has a, oh, hi. <laughs> has a room and everything. So clean, has a window. Yes. <laughs> so what happened on this catering truck is they, so they move from location to location and every once in a while we get a story of um, somebody plugging in a 240 volt plug into the, to, into the 115 volt truck and blowing everything up on board. So this is what the situation was this time. So we just checked over all of the refrigeration equipment and unfortunately they are going to have to replace some of the units. This truck is lower than the trucks we usually work on. There's usually enough space for us to like shuffle underneath, turn around and work underneath, but there is no space under this truck. Okay. <laughs> oh, I think I just crawled through something wet. Ooh. So we're going to ask them to take it away from the depot where it's at the, the film studio depot, take it away, raise it up a little bit so we've got a bit of space underneath. And then it looks like we're going to have to replace six condensing units on that system, on that truck. So lots of work for us, um, but we have to make sure that that truck is lifted because otherwise we just can't work that way. And the last job I'll tell you about this week was a brand new thing for me. We replaced an HRV, which is a heat recovering ventilation system. I haven't done any work with HRVs. In fact, I was taking a look at it and I'm like, there's really nothing to this. There's four duct holes. There's two little motors on the inside. And then there's this like mysterious box in the middle that exchanges the air, like in a magical, mysterious way. <laughs> Somebody actually took the time to explain it to me on Instagram and I have to go and read that a few times because I'm like, it still sounds like a magical mystery box. I don't know. You say that it exchanged air inside, but how? I don't know. <laughs> Basically, it takes stale air from the house and replaces it with fresh air, but it mixes in that little heat, that air exchanger, it mixes so that um, the air that comes out of it isn't freezing cold fresh air, it's been heated by the stale air. Yeah, something like that, right? The new unit had a completely different ducting configuration. The old one had two ducts on either side and two on the top. This one had all four on the top. So we just had to rejig the duct work a little bit to make it all fit. Um, and it actually worked out pretty well. In fact, we were a little bit over-prepared. We took a bunch of extra six-inch round ducks with us and some elbows and everything. And unfortunately, we had to do a massive return because we turns out we didn't actually need all of those. So that was good. 
And the house that this HRV is in is just beautiful. This guy, he collects so many interesting art pieces. I snuck a little video for you guys. This guy's got the coolest art in his house. Look at this. Fade the day, fly by night. That's so cool. Then we just wired it up. And we had to unfortunately change the little controllers. There's a controller in each of his bathrooms. There's three of them. It's actually just a little timer. Just press the button and it counts down 20 minutes with this um, HRV working. All right, guys. Well, I am looking forward to a sunny, hot weekend. The first one we've had in this year, I guess, in Vancouver. So thank you so much for joining me on this episode of the HVAC Diaries HVAC blog. Happy weekend. Happy spring and almost summertime. And I will see you guys next week on this vlog. Thanks for joining me. Bye, guys. It's time for an HVAC vlog.